So recently I posted a video on the urban logging that I do and I thought as a fun extension of that, this is Brandon. He is a local arborist, also a, I'll say maybe a long time viewer of the channel, but maybe we can exaggerate that a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Something like that, you've been watching for a while. So he contacted me and wanted to see if I wanted to do something together. So I thought it'd be really interesting to go out and kind of see things from Brandon's perspective as someone thought they were moving these urban trees and everything like that. So Brandon, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us how you got into tree work, and then tell us a little bit about this job in particular. Yeah, I started this business back in college days eight years ago. I spent most of my time in college pole vaulting and rock climbing. And at some point I figured, you know, if I can climb rocks, I can climb trees. And read a few books and learned a few things. And that was the beginning of that. Um, this black walnut tree I found on Craigslist a few weeks ago. And it was kind of funny. By the time I got there, the neighbor had already tried to take down this tree himself. Um, he was actually an arborist maybe 20 years ago and thought he'd give it a shot. And after taking down the easy third of it, decided it might be past his comfort zone. So he left me with the entire rest of the tree over the hanging the house. But after meeting this family and hearing their story, they were looking to sell the house for some medical reasons. I was willing to take it down for free to help them out. And because I just really wanted the log to mill some boards. So that's how I got it. So the day prior to Matt coming out, we spent a half day dropping the canopy piece by piece over the house and then met up with Matt the next day and um, dropped one last remaining section of the tree, a nice 10 foot log, and then roped up the remaining trunk that was leaning nice away from the house. And then I wanted to try to maintain as big of a log as I could, so I made a shallow cut and flat back cut and safely dropped it in the yard. And we ended up with just over a 10 foot log that has a pretty awesome crotch section that's about 58 inches from end to end. So yeah, I'm excited to mill it. Yeah, I think I came across your video sometime last summer, probably about a year ago because you are doing exactly what I'm getting into. Taking logs that I cut down and milling it and make some furniture. Although I haven't made that much yet. Most of the stuff that I've cut and milled is still drying. So what happens <laughs> normally, like, obviously not every person doing removals in the urban space is milling them into lumber, so like, is is there they to take it to a big dump site? Is there a big chipper there? Like what happens to all the stuff or is it just a couple of firewood or what's the downstream process typically? Because obviously you're doing some, some salvaging, which is awesome, but you can't salvage everything either. So what happens to the stuff? Industry wide, it seems like most tree services just aren't really in the business of doing anything with the logs they take down. So they just bring them to local brush sites where it gets chipped and turned into wood chips or mulch or just burned. And um, so from my experience, if anyone's looking for logs, it's not that tough to walk up to your local tree service working on some tree project and ask if you can have a few logs and you might be surprised how willing they are to leave some logs for you and maybe even cut it up to your size.
How's the weight? Heavy? What's that? Oh, I had these on. I didn't even hear you. So how's the weight? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. Small one. I guess, uh, about two feet, the crotch. It's pretty good. Through here is, uh, 15 inches. It's not bad. Yeah. It looked a lot smaller when I was on the tree. Seriously, it yeah. It looked a lot smaller up there. Way smaller. When a 15 inch diameter tree by itself isn't that uncommon. <laughs> That's like a normal sized tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. So we have a few inches before we get down to the crotch area and things are getting really wide. So make some thinner cuts at five quarter until we get down to the wider areas and then we'll switch to cutting eight quarter. Oh yeah, that's a good one. How's it looking? You look ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, 
Nice smooth board. Just starting to get into some figure. <laughs> Not much yet. Call another board because this next slide is going to be right in the cracker. Oh, yeah, that's cool. It's coming along nice. to the crotch, Matt. We're there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. That is nice. Yeah, that's going to be a gorgeous board. Oh, yeah. That was a money shot right there. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> sweet. Doing good, Walnut. All right, things are getting exciting now. I think this is the biggest one. Okay. And let's keep it here and then flip it. Turn out pretty cool. That's a big, uh, big, big slab. Yeah, big slabs. Just a little bit of moving that way. <laughs> what, you ain't got to work out yesterday? No, did I didn't. Whose idea was 10 foot logs? I don't know. You notice how much greener this is compared to this brownness? In like 10 minutes. Yeah, it didn't take up. long. Uh, it's nice. Yeah, that'll work for something. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
Yeah. Oh, break time's over? has a lot going on. It's cool. It's cool swirly pack. So it's a few days later and all we have left is this double crotch section to cut up and we spent a lot of time trying to get this thing oriented and figuring out how we want to cut it because we want to expose as much of the crotch figure as possible in both crotch sections which is going to be a little bit on the challenging side since the two crotches are rotated relative to each other. So we have a log up here what we think is the best orientation to give us at least a couple of boards that have a good amount of crotch figure in each of them. Now we're not really expecting the other cuts to be all that spectacular, but they'll still be good for regular boring material, but those few that we get from the center area should be really good. Oh yeah.
So we got all the slabs loaded up into Brandon's trailer and then he took them and stacked them so they can dry. So Brandon already has plans for a lot of this material. He wants to turn a lot of it into his own projects. And one thing that he shared with me that I think is going to be really awesome is on the double crotch slabs, we're trying to get two really good slabs out of that so we can make an oval table. And the idea there is you take one of the slabs and you rotate it 180 degrees and put it back together and you get an overall oval shape with a void in the middle that you could fill with some glass or a resin, which I think will look really cool. So some really awesome slabs and of course a big thank you to Brandon for taking me out there and having me there on the removal. It was a lot of fun to see that and also to hear his perspective on you know, his side of the removal jobs and all of that stuff. So big thanks, Brandon. And uh, yeah, so that was a fun one. Definitely enjoyed slabbing as always. I'm just happy sawing stuff up. <laughs> so as always, thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.